Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to MedSynapse podcast series, your destination for insightful medical discussions. I'm your host, Dr. Nigar, and today we have a special guest joining us. Join me as we unravel the intricate interplay between physiology and lifestyle factors in managing polycystic ovarian syndrome, drawing from evidence-based research and practical insights gained from years of clinical practice. Our special guest today is Dr. Anita Dilip, a distinguished figure in the world of women's health. Dr. Anita brings a wealth of expertise to our discussion, having explored topics ranging from the effects of weight loss in PCOS to the physiological impact of infertility. With over two decades of experience as a specialist and obstetrician and gynecologist, and currently in UAE, she holds a master's from the Royal College of Obstetrics and Gynecology in the UK and has concluded groundbreaking research in the field of women's health. Dr. Anita's latest research delves into the physiology and lifestyle management of polycystic ovarian syndrome, a condition affecting millions of women worldwide. Her insights promise to shed light on effective strategies for managing this complex condition. Without further delay, let's dive into our conversation with Dr. Anita Dilip as we explore the nuances of PCOS and discover practical approaches to its management. Welcome, Dr. Anita. Thank you so much, Dr. Negar, for a wonderful introduction. So I am very excited to share my knowledge. And I'm very thankful to Med Synapse and Dr. Nigar for providing me this platform to share my experience and my knowledge in the my most favorite subject, that is a polycystic ovarian syndrome. So before going in detail for the weight loss strategies in the management is a cornerstone of the polycystic ovarian syndrome. I would like to uh, give a brief introduction what condition this is. This is the one of the most common endocrine disorders affecting the women of the childbearing age. As far as prevalence is concerned, it is mostly affecting the Middle East and Asian women. And uh, this is not uh, only the single factorial condition. There are the multiple factors contributing in the pathophysiology of the polycystic ovarian syndrome. And most important is the insulin resistance. Obesity and the and genetics also plays somehow role because it runs in the families as well. So this is a not uh, the condition not affects only the physical appearance of the women, but mental health is also badly affected. So the management needs the multidisciplinary approach, including the psychological support too. We are using the Rotterdam criteria to diagnose the polycystic ovarian syndrome, which consists of two out of three criteria, including the oligoovulation or anovulation, clinical or biochemical presentation of the hyperandrogenism, or the appearance of the polycystic ovaries on the transvaginal scan. So uh, as far as pathophysiology is concerned, as I already mentioned, that this is not a single factor that plays the cause for the polycystic ovarian syndrome. So out of that, uh, what happens physiologically, the ovary is consist of two types of the cells, granulosa cells and theca cells. So whenever there is an insulin resistance, there is the high level of the insulin, which causes the hypersecretion of the luteinizing hormone from the pituitary gland, which in turn affects on the theca cells of the ovaries, which in turn uh, releases the high levels of the androgens and causing the hyperandrogenic condition, resulting into the clinical presentation of the polycystic ovaries, which may present as a menstrual irregularities or the acne, hirsutism, weight gain, infertility. And this is not only the current presentation, but it has a long-term health consequences, including the metabolic syndrome, diabetes mellitus, cardiovascular diseases, dyslipidemia, and most important, sleep apnea and the endometrial pathologies. So as I mentioned earlier that uh, the obesity in, and insulin resistance are the main contributing factors. So in order to manage the condition, the cornerstone of treatment is the healthy lifestyle in terms of the healthy eating and the regular exercises. So uh, coming to the healthy eating, what type of the diet should be advised to the women having this condition, complex condition? 
actually uh, it should be under supervision of the dietitian as i already mentioned this is a uh, this needs the multidisciplinary team approach so dietitian is the right person who can guide about the calories what type of the food and what amount of the food they should consume in a day dr anita thank you so much for your comprehensive response you have provided a great overview of the hormonal imbalances seen in PCOS and their physiological implications. It is evident that the dysregulation of hormones such as the insulin, androgens, and follicle-stimulating hormones can have far-reaching effects on various aspects of reproductive and metabolic health in individuals with PCOS. Now, moving on to our next question regarding the lifestyle modification what dietary changes are recommended for managing PCOS symptoms and how do they affect the insulin insensitivity? Yeah, thank you so much for asking very important question because lifestyle modification in terms of healthy eating and regular exercise is a cornerstone for the management. So the diet uh, should be provided by the dietitian, which is the right person to discuss about the how much calories and what type of the food. So the food having the low glycemic index mean the low glycemic index means that those foods where the absorption is slow, that's why the rise in glucose will be very slow and that will regulate the insulin level, avoiding the sudden rise and peaks and troughs in the insulin level. These diets include the whole grains, legumes, fruits, vegetable, and also the complex carbohydrates, which include sweet potato and quinoa. They slowly absorb and prevent a spike in insulin level and there will be the stabilization in the level of the glucose, thereby improving the hormonal imbalances. Furthermore, the healthy fats, because the diet should be the balanced diet. We are not advising women to keep themselves hungry. Rather, they have to keep, uh, take the small frequent meals with intermittent snacks in order to maintain the sugar levels and avoiding the hypersecretion of the insulin and the insulin resistance with subsequent hormonal imbalances in terms of the hyperandrogenism. So they have to take the all components of the diet, including the carbohydrates, fats, and the uh, proteins. But healthy fats, for example, avocado, nuts, seeds, and fatty fish, they also improve the insulin sensitivity and the hormonal imbalances. Regarding the protein component, they like the lean proteins, including the chicken, turkey, fish, tofu, and legumes. They also help to regulate the blood sugar levels. Apart from this, the lean proteins promote the satiety, mean early satisfaction, early fullness, in order to avoid the overeating. And we have to limit the added sugar in any kind of the food stuffs or the drinks. It is advisable to avoid the processed foods because they also increase the sudden rise in the sugar levels, thereby increasing the insulin levels. And also it is uh, suggested that the limited portion of the meal, mean that we have to limit the size of the food. That's why the, we can maintain the sugar levels and maintain the insulin levels. Dr. Anita, thank you so much for shedding light on the dietary aspect of managing PCOS. It is fascinating to hear how these diet changes can positively impact insulin sensitivity and help improve the symptoms that are associated with PCOS. Now, talking about the exercise, how does regular exercise contribute to management of PCOS, particularly in terms of hormone regulation and weight management? Yeah, thank you for asking another important question because the exercise uh, not only helps in the weight reduction and maintenance of the body weight, but also improves the hormonal imbalances. This is not a huge weight loss. This is as per the RCOG guidelines recommends that only the 5 to 10 percent of our baseline body weight is enough to restore our hormonal imbalances in condition of the polycystic ovary syndrome. What happens with the regular exercises is regular exercise burns the calories and maintain the healthy weight. More weight, what happens if we are obese? The insulin resistance is increased. So this is a vicious circle. If we are obese, the insulin resistance will be more. And if insulin resistance is there, obesity will be more. So this is a vicious circle that is impacting our hormonal balances. Especially in the insulin resistance, the visceral body fat is more. That more increases the insulin resistance. So with the regular exercise, the visceral fat is lost, thereby improving the insulin sensitivity and ultimately 
improving the hyperandrogenism condition which is responsible for the clinical presentation of the PCOs. Apart from this, there is an increase in the muscle mass. What happens if muscle mass is increased? If muscle mass is increased, there is increase in the metabolic rate and also there is the regularization or the stabilization of the blood sugar levels. Apart from th uh, this, as uh, we can, uh, we have also practical in our own life that whenever we are doing the exercises, we feel the relax from the our inside. I mean, it is also the one of the stress releasing therapy. And uh, in addition to that, regular exercises decreases the androgen levels and ultimately improves the insulin sensitivity. So the exercise in terms of uh, it is advisable by, by the RCOG guideline that at least 150 minutes per week including the 90 minutes of the aerobic exercise that could be the cycling, that could be the jogging, that could be the brisk walking will improve the insulin sensitivity and ultimately improve the hyperandrogenic condition and the clinical presentation of the polycystic ovarian syndrome. Definitely, Dr. Anita. It is clear that regular physical activity not only aids in weight management, but also helps in hormone regulation which are both important components in reducing the symptoms of PCOS. Now, what about when it comes to stress? Can stress management techniques such as mindfulness or relaxation exercises help alleviate PCOS symptoms? And if so, how does it help? Yeah, there is a lots of research has been done on these issues because, you know, now in majority of our medical fields, the, this is the one of the main component to treat any kind of the condition. So it is also important in the management of the polycystic ovarian syndrome. As I already mentioned at the start that this is not only the physical appearance and the physical condition of the women, but mental health is also badly impacted. So the mindfulness in form of the deep breathing exercises are the uh, meditations and the yoga decreases the stress hormone, which we call cortisol. And cortisol is the one of the important contributing factor in causing the insulin resistance as well as hormonal imbalances. So by doing the regular stress management exercises by the mindfulness, by yoga and meditation, the cortisol level will decrease, which in turn improves the insulin sensitivity and ultimately the hormonal imbalances is corrected. In addition to this, regular mindfulness improves uh, our mood and decreases the anxiety. And also doing the regular mindfulness exercises, our coping strategies is improved. I mean to say, okay, whenever there is a more stress, through these exercises, we learn how to manage the stress, how to cope up. Because this, these type of the exercise changes our mind to have a look on the condition. So thereby improving our not only physical, but also the mental and also the hormonal imbalances associated with the polycystic ovarian syndrome. And that concludes our discussion on polycystic ovary syndrome and its management. I want to extend my sincerest gratitude to Dr. Anita Dilip for her valuable insights and knowledge shared with us today. Thank you so much, Dr. Anita. Your contributions have undoubtedly enriched and improved our understanding of PCOS and provided guidance for our listeners. Thank you so much once again. I would like to say this polycystic ovarian syndrome is a very vast subject and we need at least three to four sessions to understand it in, in depth because this is a one of the common endocrine disorder affecting the millions of women. So I hope so we will have a, another chat during this session. Once again, very thank you. Thank you so much. Definitely, doctor. It's an honor for us to have you on a series of sessions to cover this very important topic. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's my pleasure to be here. Thank you, doctor. And to our listeners, thank you also for being here, for tuning in and for engaging with us. Your interest and participation are what makes this podcast possible. We hope today's episode has been very informative and empowering, inspiring you to take the steps towards managing PCOS and optimizing the health of the patients. Remember to stay tuned for more enlightening discussions on medical topics that matter. This is Dr. Nigar signing off. Until next time, take care and goodbye.